Hi, I'm Larry Magid, and today I'm interviewing Yanir Baryem, who's an expert in pandemics and other scientific endeavors. And we're talking about the COVID-19 pandemic, of course, and specifically what companies like Yelp and Google can do uh, to help rate businesses. But we began by talking in general about COVID and some of the precautions that people can take. You've been doing a lot of work around COVID-19 for really the last several months. Uh, trying to get a national strategy as well as local strategies to make us safer. And I was wondering if you, first of all, talk a little bit about the work you do in general and the work you're doing around COVID. And then let's talk about some of the things that can be done to encourage safety, including things that can be done by uh, technology companies like Yelp and social media companies. Sure. Well, it starts with, you know, pandemic work that I've been doing for 15 years and work in uh, Ebola in West Africa and uh, understanding that an outbreak is not the same as a disease that circulates in a population. And the most important thing really is that when you have a terrible disease that's very fast moving, that one has to act and one should know that one can not only what people call flatten the curve or, or slow it down, but one can actually get rid of it. And, and getting rid of it is super great because then you can go back to normal. And so people get caught in this, how long will this last and all of this stuff. But if you act really strongly for a few weeks, uh, then you can stop it completely. Now, then, how does that differ from herd immunity, which of course requires people either be infected or immunized? Uh, when you say get rid of it, what does that mean to actually literally get rid of it? Get rid of it actually means preventing people from getting sick. The disease only exists by transmitting from one person to another. So if you stop the disease from transmitting, preventing people from getting sick, then you, the, the disease dies. The virus dies. So the virus just dies away. It dies away. It exactly. has no host. You don't have it anymore. Um, the, the idea of herd immunity is somehow to let everyone get sick or almost everyone get sick. So you have as much of the death and disease and suffering that you were afraid of, right? Because mm -hmm. the reason why we're worried about the disease is because it's severe. And so somehow there's this idea, well, let's let all of the suffering happen and then the disease won't be as severe because people who are left will be immune from it. Why would you want to do that? It well, to play devil's sense. advocate, isn't there there's some thought that if young, healthy people get sick, they'll have a relatively mild reaction and then older and compromised well, people all, won't die? Young people do get severely sick. Fewer of them die, but they get severely sick. And there may be very long-term damage from those illnesses that we don't yet understand. That's number one. But number two, we've never really been able to protect other people from people from each other, right? So if you have the young people getting sick, the older people do still get sick. We can't, we can't stop it uh, from happening. So this idea that somehow you'll use part of the population. And the other thing is that, in fact, there aren't enough young people. And it's not just young people that you would have to do, but only the young people that are healthy, because the mm -hmm, young right. people that have any condition, they wouldn't, be, they wouldn't be candidates for getting sick without having severe outcomes. Um, and the countries that have been talking about herd immunity and even acting in it as policy, they don't protect anybody. They actually just let people die, which is horrendous thing to do. The death rates are very large, and it's not as if they've been able to protect them. So now this here whole in the idea States, is bogus. I yeah. know here in the United States, you had proposed, I believe, early March, that the president, that the federal government should, should have a national lockdown, so to speak, and felt, you felt that that was a, a solution or a part solution, but obviously that never happened. It, it's much easier to do things if people act together because if you act together then the timeline is very short otherwise you have to do it locally 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 now it still can do it so if you do it at the state level then you can take care of it for the state and then you have to worry about the boundaries of the state and make sure that other states are not sending you cases and if the state doesn't do it then you have to do it internally now you still it's very helpful actually to break up the areas because there's a tremendously powerful strategy for, for stopping outbreaks. And that is to work on it locally, right? Because what you want to do is you want to stop it where the disease is and not let it get other places. The more you let it spread, the more you have to stop it everywhere. So the best thing to do is to stop it when it's in one place, not let it get out. And that's called a sort of green zone strategy. And the huge advantage of it that all of the things that people are worried about, like shutting down and, and the economic impacts are much smaller because in the green areas, you can do normal activities or at least have some precautions, but not nearly the kinds of precautions that we've had in order to shut things down. Um, and, 
and the, the areas that actually have the outbreaks, that's where you put in all the effort and you make sure that it, it goes away. And is it too late to do that in the United States or is it still possible? Every moment that we have the opportunity to act, we could get rid of it. It's really just a question of decision. And it could be a neighborhood or it could be a town or it could be a city or it could be a state or it could be the country as a whole. As long as everyone together says, hey, we want to get rid of this, let's get rid of it in our space. We'll take responsibility for it here and, and then we can do it. Now, the protests that have been going on, which are obviously motivated by a very important issue about equity and, and the safety of, of African-Americans and others, nevertheless have put a lot of people in close proximity with each other, some wearing masks, some not, some police officers wearing masks, but I've seen a lot of pictures of police officers not wearing these masks. Is there any solace in the fact that these are mostly outdoors? Is that going to protect people in any way? Yeah, there are two things that helped us in this context. One is that they're outdoors. And there were a lot of people wearing masks, if not everybody. Yeah. Right? So that also helps. Masks are hugely important. They're a filter. If you even have viral particles around, but you have a filter, then you, you, you don't breathe it in, at least not as likely, and then you may not get the... So breathe. even the wearer of a cloth mask is safer. Not just, you're Much not just safer, protecting yeah. other people. You're also yeah. protecting yourself. Much safer. Outdoors yeah. really helps. The other thing is that because we were kind of just after a long period of lockdown, many of the people who were symptomatic, we knew were sick, were already in isolation or quarantine. And, and those are the people that you have to, that are the biggest risk. So if those people didn't participate in protests, then the likelihood of new cases in protests is much less. That doesn't mean they won't happen. So the fear is, of course, that there will be these super spreader events that get a lot of people sick. Even a few cases, of course, is a very bad thing because it grows and grows and grows from there. But at least we had effectively less risk because many of the cases that we were counting as being cases at that time, were many of them were probably already somewhat isolated or isolated. And so we didn't have the full risk. But of course, as, as, you, as I'm sure you know, obviously, and even I know from, from what I've read, is that you can be asymptomatic, not know yeah. you're sick, and still be spreading the disease. I, there right. may very well have been people in the protests who were infected and asymptomatic. Almost surely, yes. And now the question is, and, and, and so the, the question really is, given those kind of somewhat mitigating factors that are not enough, now you're talking about sort of what are the odds? And here's the uncertainty, and this is why you don't want to take those risks. We don't really understand the risk with this disease very well. It's like we haven't lived with it for decades and centuries. Right. And so taking risks is a really bad idea because if it explodes, then you get a huge amount of, of, of suffering and death. So what, we, what you want to do is not take the risk. But if we did take the risks, and maybe we've been fortunate and it didn't happen as bad as it could, don't say, okay, now things are all right. We still right. really want to take... All of, the all of the precautions, and, 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 the ans and, and particularly not just because, well, hey, it didn't increase explosively, but what we really want to do is just get to zero. Now, what about the president's having a rally, an indoor rally in Tulsa. He plans to have 19,000 people in the, in, the, in the facility. Apparently, masks are optional, and certainly the president won't wear a mask. He has never worn a mask in public. Is that a higher risk in the protest? Is that a, are you worried about that event? Sure. I mean, I understand that they've been having everyone sign a liability agreement. Right. Um, I, I think that, um, you know, uh, e eventually uh, um, it's, you know, people are, are creating this circumstance where they're basically saying, if you decide to take this risk, then that's okay. And, and, and sometimes I think, well, maybe we should get all of these people who want to take those risks and get them together and let them take those risks together and not influence everybody else. But the truth is, they're not just taking their risks for right. themselves. Right. And they cannot sign away the liability that they have for the hospitals and the doctors and all of the people that are going to have to either treat them or their families or their relatives or their friends. So the fact that other people are connected to this, let's say someone goes to the rally and signs a liability agreement and they get sick, and they infect their friends. Their friends didn't sign the liability right. agreement. Right. And the hospital doctor who has to treat them didn't sign a liability agreement with the, those people. So maybe them suing them and the liability that they will have over this fact that it's not a disconnect. You cannot have an individual be responsible. Individuals are not the entity making the, the, that 
that has the risk in this context, right. the society that has the risk in this context. So, so there's very possible people can come to that rally, be infected, lead the rally, not know they're infected, and spread it to other people, including people Absolutely. who are highly vulnerable and could die from it. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk about things that can be done. And uh, we had talked earlier about some things that you had suggested that Yelp and Facebook and other technology companies could do to help make it safer when people do go out in public who may or may not be infected. So one of the ideas that, that kind of makes sense is to make sure that there is a responsibility of of businesses, of, of um, retail or other businesses for their employees and their workers to make sure that they don't get sick, right? They have a locational responsibility. And there are a bunch of things that having to do with that, like having screening on the way in, thermometers, having effective distancing, requiring masks, and, and in general, to, to identify who are the transmission risks, right? If you have an employee who's going home and at home, they're, they're with someone who is a worker in a hospital that might get the disease from the hospital, then that's a risk for the entire organization. Mm -hmm. So there's a necessity and, and the environment at work, whether it's, you know, the people are close together, um, whether there's good airflow, maybe there's air filtering, uh, all of these things are super important. So there's an opportunity really for everyone, including businesses and business leaders, to take responsibility for the health of their employees and their employees' families and so on. And, and the way to do that from the outside might be to have people know about it. Right. Because if I know about a supermarket that is taking responsibility or a place that I can order food from, even if I don't go there, if they're being very careful about masks, I'm going to order from them because I don't want the groceries to come to me contaminated. Right. Right. So if we have um, if ratings of the um, actions that are being taken by retail organizations, uh, pharmacies, groceries, or any place else that one might go, or um, businesses, then, then that might help because it'll be publicly available and people will vote for their feet. A lot of people are not surprisingly super afraid of what's going on. So everyone's talking about the people who are out and going to rallies and stuff like that because you know, it's irresponsible behavior. So, you know, there's people are, it, it, it's a good thing to talk about because everyone talks about it. But the fact that people are afraid and are taking precautions and are being, uh, um, you know, trying to convince family and friends to take the precautions may be less in the news because you it's know, less, you know, uh, how do you say? Um, well, if it leads, it leads. It's, it's, less, it's less dramatic, absolutely. It's less dramatic, right? We don't, we don't have stories about airplanes that land safely. We only know about That's the ones right. that crash. But, you know, I, I'm one of those people. I'm, I'm being quite cautious. And unfortunately, I've had to go to a dentist and oral surgeon a couple of times. And actually, just today, got tested. I don't know the results yet, but I'm, I'm optimistic I'm going to be fine because I feel fine. And I, I, I'm confident that my dentist and oral surgeon were using proper precautions. Uh, so I have not been to any local supermarkets other than to have them put groceries in my trunk. But I have friends who have, and some report that some are better than others. There's one Absolutely. supermarket near me. People will say, no, there, people are, are not going in one direction. A, a lot of people, are, even though they're supposed to wear masks, are not wearing masks. And there are other markets where I'm told they're taking very good precautions. But I happen to know about that anecdotally. Are you suggesting maybe a more formal way to inform people of those things? Yes, absolutely. I think it would be super helpful. I mean, you can read on many uh, websites where they say what they're doing, but we know that that's not always, you know, it's, it's marketing. It's, it's, it, yeah. You know, we have to make sure that they're actually doing it and having people evaluate what's going on, I'm sure would be extremely helpful. Yeah, I worry about that. So almost every place I deal with, I've read some webpage about all the precautions they're taking, whether it's Instacart or this food delivery service or UPS or FedEx, but I don't know. How do I know, A, whether the, the workers are actually following the procedures? Uh, it, it, you know, how can I tell? I think it would be very good if Yelp or Google and other rating places were to have a systematic way of doing this. And of course, just like with everything else, these things, people try to game them. But, you know, if we take uh, care also with the evaluation process, then I think we'll make a lot of progress. The progress will be people will be safer and also the organizations will will be doing a better job for everyone. And, and what about people? I mean, I, I'm probably being a little overcautious, but I take walks in my neighborhood and I've had joggers run by me two or feet, three feet away. And of course, when you're jogging, you're breathing more heavily. On the other hand, you're outside and you're running by quickly. 
Uh, it's all I, about airflows. And if, if you think about airflow, imagine like everyone's blowing out a cloud of, of smoke, right? And, and every breath they take, the air is going out. And if they happen to be sick, that air is going to be full of viral particles. So and that now, jogger going by me in a sunny day, am I at risk? I mean, you, you can think about kind of the plume of air that's going mm -hmm. past them. And, you know, if you're walking by them and then you keep going in the same direction, you're walking right through that plume unless the air is blowing, you know, sideways. So thinking about how the airflow is, I mean, you really have to think about aerodynamic, you know, airflows in order to figure out whether you're at risk or not. And that's why it's super important to wear a mask. So you don't, you know, you, you, you're not at risk from these particles. The, the problem is that it's like yes or no. You either get sick or you don't get sick. It's not like, you know, there's a, there's a little bit sick. You know, right. you, I got a little bit less, so I didn't get sick. No, you're either sick or you're not sick. And because you're either sick or you're not sick and you don't want to be sick, you, you don't really want to take risk of, of, of breathing in the air that they've just breathed out. And so those, you might get lucky, right, because the person wasn't sick. Or you might get lucky because the air flows in the, wrong, in the other direction. Uh, but, but, you know, this is why, you know, taking an action that has a very definite risk reduction like wearing a mask is so important. So, so this is actually a sort of a personal question because I think about this all the time. So if I'm walking down the street and let's say a person is in front of me, how much time or distance should I allow for that person to clear that I can confidently walk behind them and have re relatively little risk of being infected? So it actually super depends upon the airflow. If the air is stagnant, the air is just going to sit there. When indoor, indoors, that would be the case. But of course, That's outdoors, right. it's likely to be some flow some flow but it really depends you know sometimes you feel the air is not moving right yeah and sometimes the air is blowing and then it also depends which way it's blowing if someone was standing uh, far away from me but the air was blowing straight from them to me i would be very uncomfortable it so you would that. recommend people wear masks when walking running cycling as well, well as basically indoors. the way i say it, people talk about this six feet distance as sort of a measure um the way i think about it is a sneeze is like 27 feet mm -hmm. blows or, and and so you know it, and that's if it's direct in a direction that it goes so i would say maybe not quite that far but more like 18 20 feet is kind of a safe distance uh, but again i mean if they're walking along the road and you're walking along behind them you're kind of accumulating all of that risk as you go although it will be dissipating over time i presume right but right. we but but the point is that if you're, if you're behind them, even a distance, but let's say you walk along the road with them for a, for a distance, how much do you want to accumulate that risk? The other question, as long as I have you, what about shoes? It, my wife and I are trying try to take our shoes off before we come in the house on the theory totally. that maybe we stepped on it. Yeah. I mean, it's known actually that, that, that shoes are a risk for carrying it around. And obviously it depends. You know, you're walking around outside in the grass or something like that. Nobody's there. Sure, no problem. But as soon as you get on a space where people are regularly walking, where people are regularly walking, yeah. I super wouldn't bring in the shoes into the house. I would decontaminate them if I even thought about it, but I would leave them outside the door or, you know, just inside the door in whatever is appropriate place that is going to be away yeah. from everything else. Well, this has been a much more uh, extensive conversation than I had planned, and I appreciate that because I think a lot of people are curious. But just to reiterate, you are recommending that sites like Yelp and other Google, other evaluation sites, start rating businesses based on their COVID safety. Yes. And you're also pointing out that, that there's a lot we don't know uh, and that wearing masks is protective of both the wearer and the people around the wearer. Yeah. And um, as... As people say, you know, people say, I can do whatever I want, you know, and I can, you know, but if what you do affects other people, right, then it's, it's no longer just your, well, you, you, it's, it's no it's, longer just about you. It's like smoking. If you want to smoke, I mean, you're a grown up, I'm not going to stop you, but if, but your, right. your right to smoke ends at my nose. I mean, if I'm That's in right. your, my, I don't want your secondhand smoke. And with a disease like this, it's not just the people that catch your smoke, it's the people who catch your smoke and the people that they catch that smoke from and the people who they catch that smoke from. So this cascading, and this is the nature of what a contagious disease is about. It's not about anybody in particular. It's about how it spreads. Right. And so, you know, anything that you do to claim that you have a responsibility just to decide for yourself 
It just doesn't make sense. And you know what amazes no me? Principle. There's no principle, right? This idea of what is it called? Um, uh, people have this principle of of autonomy, right? You know, we have a principle of. Um, uh, I should know the ideology. Yeah, I know. It, it's well. It's the same thing. Like for example, during World War II, Americans were incredibly uh, compliant in terms of saving scrap metal, uh, turning the lights off if they were in a coastal town, doing things to save the whole country, not just themselves. And we are capable of that as a, as a species of understanding that uh, we have to behave in a certain way to benefit other people. I mean, there's two reasons to drive safely. One is to, to pre prevent yourself from being injured or killed, but the other is to prevent other people from being injured and killed. I wouldn't want to right. run and over you, a pedestrian. You don't have the right, you, you just don't have the right to make decisions that cause other people's to, people to die or be severely right. sick. Right. And it's just, there's not a question about that, right? right. If you did something uh, by, you know, you have a, a contagious disease and you intentionally went and you got someone else sick, you're liable. Or recklessly did so. Or yeah. recklessly did so. Or right. in this case, we know what's happening. And actions that people take are causing other people to be sick, are causing people to, be do to die. It's just not okay. And, and so the liability in a public event, the liability in, in, in what's going on, in po politics to have a public event and not to recognize that this is not just affecting the people who are in the room, but the society as a whole. That's just unreasonable. Okay. Well, uh, Yanir Bargam, thank you so much for your sharing the information and uh, I wish you the best of success in getting the word out and we're gonna do what we can uh, to help uh, encourage businesses and people who rate businesses to start rating them on safety. Yeah, and, and I hope you will be well. You too. Thank you so much.